Yeah. Our guest in this segment is the Vice Chair of Finance, Delegate John Hardy in the West Virginia House of Delegates. Johnny? Good morning, gentlemen. And I think uh, Gil Straff was a little intimidated because his voice went up a couple octaves I there when so he was too. defending himself. <laughs> He's so a little that, in awe. He was a guest. little bit, yeah. 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 So He's I blushing listen. right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, I got three Johns here. Yeah, that's wow. It yeah. is. Yeah. Bodwell, Gilstrap, Hardy. So from now on, you're all going to be your last name in the next half hour here. Sounds good. That's right. that's pretty good for me. People, I, I don't know why people always refer to me as Hardy. Hey, Hardy. I get that all the time. So yeah, I get that. I get the Bodwell. I like it's good. It's Johnny, the, Johnny, the Bod separates you from all the other Johns out there. I appreciate that. So to speak. You have an announcement to make, Mr. Hardy. I do. I'm here this morning to announce uh, on WNRNR my intentions for 2024. I'm announcing this morning that I will uh, be seeking the Republican nomination for the Berkeley County Council in the Tuscarora District in 2024. So uh, I will finish out my term in the legislature in 2024. I'm excited to get back to Charleston and working uh, very diligently in my uh, last legislative session in the House. But I'm announcing this morning that I will be running for the Berkeley County Council in the Tuscarora District for the Republican nomination. Is this the Barnhart seat? This is Jim Barnhart seat. Yes, I've had Jim is not running again and I've had conversations with Jim and and Linda who are longtime friends of mine and uh, I've had conversations with uh, uh, all of the uh, ex, uh, commissioners that are now sitting commissioners and 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 past commissioners and uh, I feel like I have a very unique skill set and uh, this is an opportunity that uh, I, I feel like uh, this is a calling and something that I want to try to do so uh, if you go back and listen to my very early um, <clears throat> interviews when I was going when I was running for the House of Delegates all the way back in 2018 um, I made it very clear that probably six years was probably going to be the length of time that I wanted to serve in the legislature, and I feel like that I've had a, a very successful six years. I feel like I've gotten a lot, gotten a lot accomplished. Um, I have made some tremendous contacts and some tremendous friends, uh, both in the legislature and state government and agencies. Um, I feel like that that is going to be a, a very strong suit uh, to work in my favor as a county commissioner. They, uh, I believe that Berkeley County is, is very uniquely positioned in the state of West Virginia as the fastest growing county. Uh, we're probably around 135,000 uh, with uh, only Kanawha County being in front of us at about 165,000 and shrinking. So I think that, uh, you know, our county has a lot of unique um, problems and and and. And the next, you know, six to ten years is going to be very exciting times and very important times in the development of the county. And I really think that I uh, am in a good position to be able to work uh, in the county to be able to help develop that. John, to those who know you, I don't think this has been uh, this will be a great surprise, this announcement that you're making. There's been rumors for a little while now, at least anyway, that you might be uh, looking to run for council at some point along the way. Uh, you mentioned six years was your timeline early on, but you're moving up in the House of Delegates now, Vice Chair of Finance already in just your fifth year in Charleston. Why stop now while you're on the climb? Well, you know, I just feel like uh, it's it's my time to go do something different. I'm a I'm, I'm a kind of guy. It doesn't really matter uh, where I'm. At, you know, if, I know that I'm ascending in the House, and I've been kind of a fast mover in the House. And being the Vice Chairman in in five years has been wonderful, and I very much enjoy being the Vice Chair of Finance. I I, I really really enjoy the legislative process and the people. But uh, I really feel like it's time for me to come back uh, to to Martinsburg and come back to Berkeley County. Uh, a lot of the legislation that I've worked on in the um, uh, in the House has been legislation to, to help Berkeley County um, to make sure that we are keeping the money that is our money, making sure that we are recognized, uh, our needs are recognized, um, just a lot of different things to make sure that Berkeley County is getting its say in um, Charleston and trying to keep as much money here as we can. And uh, so I, I feel like I want to come back and work on a more personal level. Uh, there's some things that I want to be involved in uh, in Berkeley County that I that I miss. So before I was elected to the House, you know, I was a member of the Planning Commission. I was very involved in Rotary. I was very involved in Habitat. Uh, you know, did some stuff with the um, Builders Association, did a lot of stuff here locally. And since I've been in the legislature, I haven't really been able to be involved in a lot of that stuff. And, and I, and I kind of miss my community a little bit. So I think um, this is a, a very unique opportunity for me to be able to use my skill set um, as a longtime business owner. Um, you know, I think as a county commissioner, you manage 
um, people, projects, and money. And, and I think that that's my strong suit. Uh, in my everyday business, I manage people, money, and projects. Um, and I have a unique skill set of being uh, so intimately involved with the state's budget and the finances. Um, and I've made a lot of connections on the state level that I think will be uh, working in the favor of Berkeley County on trying to continue to move the county forward and stay on top of all of the unique struggles that we are going to face. Had you considered a run for the Senate? I had thought about a run for the Senate. It was something that I had thought about. Uh, Senator Blair uh, has decided that he is going to run again. Uh, I'm a real, um, I'm a process person. I'm a real process guy. And, and I believe that Senator Blair has been in the trenches for a very, very long time. And if Senator Blair wants to run for reelection, I, uh, that is completely up to him. And I don't think that it's someone that I would want, that I don't think that I want to challenge him in that um, role because I believe he's earned the right to, to run for that role again. Now, if the constituents see differently, then that's up to the constituents, but I'm a process guy and I, I you know, I'm a, a, people don't like to hear this, but as, as much as it is, politics is a team sport. And, you know, I think I've been very effective and I've been able to, um, make progress and headway in the house because I, I have a unique ability to be able to build relationships with people, people that maybe I don't get that I don't agree with or have very different backgrounds than I have, but I'm very good at building relationships. You know, <clears throat> as someone on the, earlier today said, you know, uh, politics is the art of compromise. doesn't mean you have to sell your soul, but you at least need to be able to work around the edges to be able to work with others who have different ideas than you do to be able to compromise and come up with a, a happy medium. So um, I would sell myself as someone who is a, a bridge builder and, and is someone who is able to, um, you know, build those relationships with people that are uh, maybe coming from a different area or coming from a different purview than I have. Well, and, and having Craig Blair in that leadership <clears throat> leadership position down there really has benefited the Eastern Panhandle. And if all of a sudden he's he's not one of the senators from here, then you know maybe we don't have maybe we don't have as much push forward for the Eastern Panhandle. I think. Yeah, yeah, and and my and my focus is one hundred one hundred percent completely on being in the county commission. I mean, I my focus lies there and working. Uh, with the unique challenges that are going to face the county, such as infrastructure and roads and broadband, you know, water, sewer, all the things that goes along with that, uh, the rapid growth, uh, working with the DOH, um, making sure, you know, we, we have some major road uh, plans that are going to have to happen in Berkeley County. So there's a lot of pieces that are going to have to come together in Berkeley County to sustain not only the residential growth that we are um, taking on, but also the commercial growth that we are taking on. So uh, there's there's some key things that are in, in the works right now that are really going to help um, Berkeley County in its infrastructure needs. Well, and I, I think uh, I think you bring a unique perspective, having been a business owner forever, still being a business owner, having the time down in the legislature, having seen how it works down there. I mean, I got to tell you, when whenever you start getting signs and stuff, please reach out because I want I want to put a sign. I've got a great spot, a lot of traffic. I, I want to support you. I, well, thank I think you. I think you'll do a heck of a job on our, our for our county as you have. I mean, a heck of a job for us. But it, I I want to see you on there. I want to see you win. Well, I've had a unique background also in the state um, being appointed to the IJDC by the governor and and working with Marie Prezioso who is runs the Water Development Authority and then also working with Ann Erling from the governor's office and, and our own John Risenweber who's a local a uh, local person who is the vice chair of the uh, uh, the IJDC, and I've worked very closely with them on infrastructure projects and funding. Uh, you know, I was able to to work with others. There was, you know, I didn't do this by myself. With uh, I worked with uh, Jim Oliet from the Water Development Authority, uh, our local water authority. I worked with uh, Commissioner. Um, uh, let's see. There was a bunch of us that worked together on getting like a $25 million grant, and then the Senate president was able to get another $25 million grant. So we've been able to raise about $50 million in grant money uh, that's coming from the IJDC for local water development projects here. Uh, we're doing pretty good on our sewer uh, capacity right now. Um, you know, we're going to continue to struggle with roads. Broadband is, is creepingly getting better, but it's uh, it's moving at a snail's pace. But lots of different projects that we need to be concerned about. What What is the most? I'm sorry. What is the most important thing that you see? What is What is the biggest change that you want to see to Berkeley County when or when and if you are elected? What do we need the most? I, I would like to see some somehow some way. Um, 
to for us to be able to control growth in certain areas so um you know and i'm not talking about zoning so i'm, I'm, I'm not proposing that we bring zoning to berkeley county berkeley county has spoken loud and clear uh in its, in its um uh, thought process on zoning but i do think that we need to be able to work through on a county level to try to be able to control some of the growth um, in certain areas of the counties, it seems like, you know, we have just explosive growth. growth. And uh, I, I think we're doing okay with the water and sewer keeping up. Um, I'm very concerned about our emergency services, um, you know, our fire, ambulance, rescue, um, our, our police departments. Uh, uh, one of the things that really much that very con, uh, very I'm very concerned about is the um, uh, the SROs for the schools, the school resource officers. Officers, I think they are an integral part of the schools. Um, I've talked many times about how they, they play such a role in, in not only being there as a security force in the school, but also um, as a buffer to be able to uh, sometimes, you know, see a situation before it unfolds. So I think that is something else that's very important to Berkeley County to make sure that we are funding those programs, working, you know, hopefully on a state level, uh, a, a county level, and a municipal level. Am I hearing tax increases in there? No, no. We, I would not vote for any tax increases. I've uh, made that very clear in the last eight years in the legislature. I've never voted for a tax increase. Um, I'm not opposed to tax shifting. I've, I've made that very clear. So, uh, like, a cons I, I've, I've told everyone I really like consumer-based taxes. But that's something that's done on a legislative level. That can't be done at the county commission level. But um, I like consumer-based taxes. I think they give people a little more control in, in their taxes. So if we shifted that tax from you know, some other tax to uh, maybe the consumer sales tax is up, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not opposed to that, but that's more on the legislative side. And I don't think there's really any, um, I don't think there's really any stomach for that in the legislature right now. And are there, in, in joining the, the, the county commission, are there pathways that we're currently heading down that you would like to see us redirect from? Yeah, there is a few things in the county that I'm, that, that I'm very happy with and some things I'm not happy with. Um, I'm, uh, I think the past count, county commission and the, and the sitting commissioners that we have now are people that are very devoted and, and are very um, locked in on what they're doing for the county. I think that our day report centers are, are wonderful. I think our drug courts are wonderful. Our rehabilitation centers that we're working on, we're doing a great job on. Um, I think that we have really good people in place at the water and sewer uh, authorities. I think that they are staying on top of the growth the best they can uh, with the uh, explosion of residential growth and, and also on commercial growth. Uh, things that I don't like is the rain tax or the rain fee or stormwater fee. What rain? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what stormwater? Yeah. Well, by the way, are people still paying that fee full throat even though there hasn't been a drop of rain in, I, I don't know, Five, six years now? I'm not exactly sure what the percentage of people who are paying that and who are not paying that. And and I think even the current council understands that that is not a very fair and equitable fee. I mean, my thing is, you know, I, I'm really big in, as I've been in the legislature, I believe in like funding formulas. I, I'm a formula guy. And I believe that, uh, you know, when we're handing out money uh, to agencies, we need to have a formula. And also if we're taking money in, there should be a formula. So I think that uh, our commercial properties, our properties that have far more impervious surfaces uh, should be paying a higher rate. Um, some of our uh, areas out in the county, um, I'm not really sure how the county is able to treat their stormwater. So they may be paying a fee for you know, an unfair fee. So um, I, I do believe that the current council understands that. I believe that's something that I would really work hard on is trying to get that to where it had, had some equity in it, where it was a, a more fairly um, spread out uh, and maybe even get rid of it on the residential side. Um, so uh, those, those are the things that I'm really happy about, things that I, that I think need a little work on. Vice Chair of Finance Delegate John Hardy, our guest, he has announced that he will not seek another term in the House. Instead, he will seek a term as a county commissioner here in the next county election coming up. Uh, John, as a soon-to-be former delegate, let's assume you win the election and you are then a seated county commissioner, would you regard yourself also as potentially the better lobbyist when it comes to dealing with items that are taking place in Charleston as they affect the counties? Well, I will tell you if I am successful in my bid of becoming a uh, county commissioner for Berkeley County that I will spend a lot of time in Charleston. 
Uh, I, I think that uh, being close to the legislature, working in the legislature, understanding that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Um, we have a outside um, lobby uh, firm that works for us or a, a firm that works for us in Charleston that does a very good job that I've worked with very, very closely and, um, and understand how they work um, to help Berkeley County. Uh, I believe that I will be in Charleston as much as uh, time will allow me to be in Charleston as a county commissioner um, during legislative session and also through interims. Interims is a really interesting time to try to get things uh, working and ideals moving. So, uh, yeah, I think I have a pretty unique perspective of, of being there for five years, uh, being the vice chair of finance, working with every agency. Uh, I typically run most of those budget hearings. Um, when those agencies come in front of us. So I know all of the agency heads. I usually know their CFOs and, and their legal counsel. And so I feel like I have a really good grasp on the, on the legislative side of it. And, uh, you know, I work with a lot of the local agencies here with our development authority, the, the airport authority. I, I mean, I know most of the people who run the agencies on the local level. So um, I have a wonderful relationship with the city of Martinsburg. I think the city of Martinsburg and, the, and Berkeley County's relationship is, is good. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, can only get stronger. I think that the city and the county work very well together on education and parks, and they're starting to work on uh, with the some of the drug rehab stuff together. So I think that I can only make that relationship stronger. Um, like I said, I have a relationship with the mayor Kevin Knowles, the city manager Mark Baldwin. Uh, I, I have uh, you know uh, really good relationships with most of the people that run the agencies within the county. So I think I'm just very uniquely positioned to be able to um, make myself very effective for Berkeley County as a commissioner. Would you look to alter the lobbying contract on behalf of the county, or since you've seen it firsthand, do you feel like it uh, should only be strengthened? Uh, I think that the, what we are doing now uh, with the firm that we are using right now, we are being very productive. Uh, we have a very strong voice in uh, Charleston. Um, and I think we are being very productive on that part, and I believe that that is an integral part of Berkeley County uh, being able to maintain uh, its uh, voice in Charleston and also being able to help um, control certain issues that are going to happen in the county that we're going to need state help with. So myself, I think that is a very strong position for the county to have and to, and to keep. You think the state should take over the jail bill? I do believe that there should be some alterations to the jail bill I do believe that, uh, you know, maybe the uh, the counties would be responsible for the first, maybe let's say first four days, five days. But if we start stretching it out and these uh, offenders are in these systems longer, no fault of the county. In other words, we, we can't get them uh, to the to their next station or where they're being sent to or they can't get them to court i think that the state bears some responsibility in that um and and i think it would probably be uh some type of formula for where the counties would pay a portion the state would pay a portion but i think for that to be effective uh the state this is the legislator coming out of me i think that those local counties should have to have some criteria in place so they should have to have drug courts day report centers, things that they can use to lessen the jail bill. Because if the counties really don't have any skin in the game to keep the bill low, there's really nothing that drives them to do that. So I think it needs to be a joint effort between the the, the, the municipalities should probably have a little skin in, in, in that um, to pay for their arrestees for maybe the first day or two. The county should have some skin in that for their, their uh, uh people that they have incarcerated, but as a certain time frame, then maybe the state would step in um, if it's no fault of their own. So I think it's a, it'll be a mixed bag. So when, when John, when you talk about what we need from the state, I mean, I think that one of the biggest things we need from the state are, we need, we need roads. I mean, we need that, that corridor out toward Hedgesville, out Route 9, where they're putting, you know, I don't know, a thousand more houses out there, and it's already like Rockville Pike, at, starting at four o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, something has to be done about that. And like you were saying, you don't want zoning. None of us want zoning. None of us want that kind of control. But there has to be some sort of a mechanism to limit more growth in places where we don't have the infrastructure 
to handle it. And we don't out there. I mean, it's 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 terrible. Yeah, the roads is the roads are one part that the county has no say in. I mean, the the right. roads are the roads are con- completely controlled by the by the state. Um, there is some legislation out there that gives the county some flexibility in roads, but no county will touch that with a ten foot pole because they don't want to start taking on responsibility of roads with no funding for that. So I, I think that that is one of the biggest challenges here in the Eastern Panhandle. I went to a, a DOH. Um, you know, seminar or get together that they had down in Jefferson County for all the local delegates and senators and county commissioners and all of their engineers. And, and, and it was a very productive, you know, time. I would tell you that four of the five Berkeley County commissioners were there. Uh, they voiced their opinions very strongly on, um, you know, that we need help on the corridor or, or on a, well, uh, a bypass route nine towards Morgan County and also the Novak Drive area, trying to relieve some of the traffic that's out by the lows and out by the intersection. And another, you know, problem that I see coming now, they have widened some of the uh, entrances to the interstate um, on some of the exits. But like, you know, the route 11 up there by where the new warehouses went in, that stretch of road from Inwood back to Winchester Avenue is, is really going to be tasked. And also where the new warehouses are going in in the Spring Mills area uh, on Route 11 from uh, the Ber- from the Falling Waters area to the Berkeley Plaza area, that piece of road is going to be heavily tasked. Well, I think it, it needs to be conveyed to the rest of the state that that we need this road help. And it's it's not like in the middle of the state where they're saying, hey, we got a road that's broken down. We need your help fixing it. We are losing population in this state. We are gaining population like crazy in the eastern panhandle, especially Berkeley County. And the better infrastructure we have, the more houses can come in and the more people paying taxes can come in, which increases the state's tax base. I mean, that's what they need to understand. That there, there's, there's no ROI. If you put a road in Putman, Putman, Putman County or Harrison County, there's no ROI. You, you spend millions of dollars up here. You add to our roads. You make it where they can put in more developments. The ROI will be there. And that's where I and that's where I believe that I will stand out. That's where I believe that, as a county commissioner, having the legislative experience that I have, um, all of the agencies that I've worked with, and 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 uh, the uh, integral knowledge of how those agencies work, I feel like, as a county commissioner, I would really be able to reach out on a state level and be able to to lobby for Berkeley County as a commissioner, um, and also work with my other commissioners. You know, making sure that we are. Uh, running our county uh, in a very fiscally responsible way. I was pretty excited to see that the county commission actually dropped the levy rate in their last, you know, when the, when the tax rate came out, they actually dropped the levy rate. And I, I spoke to Commissioner um, uh, Catlett and uh, Gokenauer about that and thought that that was, a, that was really good that they, you know, they dropped the levy rate and uh, they were not trying to have any excesses. You know, they're, they're making sure that they're, they're keeping a good, a tight budget and trying to make sure that they are being fiscally responsible with the taxpayers' money. And I really want to work very hard to continue to do that. Mr. Gilstrap, a final question for Mr. Hardy. What does this do for your clout in Charleston for the next session? I know the last big boy job I had, I gave five months notice I was going to quit and I just I stopped getting invited to meetings. It, you know, it sort of become irrelevant. Is there danger of that for Not you a bad in the next deal. session? Relaxation. Yeah, well, yeah. Paid. Paid. yeah, yeah. No. Nice plan, John. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that that helps. I don't think that it hurts me at all. I mean, I'm still the vice chair of finance, and I've, you know, as, as long as the speaker wants me to be the vice chair mm-hmm. of finance, I will still be the vice chair of finance. Uh, I am intimately involved in all of the um, agencies coming in for their budget hearings, putting the budget together. Uh, I take many, many, many meetings with, uh, you know, agencies uh, and any. Um, Anybody who's asking for money. So uh, I don't think that it will hurt. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to raise a lot of fun. I'm not going to have very many fundraisers or raise much money. I don't think people are going to give me a lot of money uh, leaving the legislature and coming back and being a county commissioner. Um, but I don't th- it's not going to curb my enthusiasm at all. I will go to Charleston and, and uh, you know, I'm just a bulldog. I just go to Charleston and work. Um, I very much en- I enjoy that. I really enjoy the budget process. I really enjoy the budget hearing process. I know that sounds a little dry, but I enjoy that. And uh, I will be very involved in the next legislative session, developing the budget, being fiscally responsible, right size government, uh, right size agencies. And uh, uh, I have some pretty interesting legislation that I'm going to be working on next session. 
And uh, I'm excited to be in Charleston for my last session. But I don't think that will um, affect my enthusiasm or the way that I am perceived in Charleston. John, thanks so much for coming in. As always, very much appreciated. Yeah, thank you guys for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Best of luck to you in your final year in the legislature and your upcoming county election. Thank you. Vice Chair of Finance Delegate John Hardy.